find out exactly what is being sold and why it's proving so controversial. Our forests represent more than just scenic walks. They're central to our heritage and our environmental prosperity, and some of them are under threat. In October last year, the government announced plans to sell off around 15% of publicly owned English forest land to private companies and individuals. They said the plan was part of David Cameron's big society vision, an attempt to empower local businesses and communities and shift the balance of power away from central government. The real reason why they're doing it is trying to raise money to reduce the budget deficit. They say they can save 750 million. I have serious doubts. But in any case, the cost to the nation is horrendous. Why does it matter who owns them? Public forests in Britain are multi-purpose. We grow trees, but we also provide recreation. Whereas private forest is dominated by the desire to make a profit. The government have announced their intentions to loosen the planning laws. What's going to happen to them? Are they going to be built on? We simply don't know. While the government may very well be using the sell-off to give power back to the people, the fear is that our forests will simply fall into the hands of wealthy investors looking to exploit some very profitable tax loopholes. You don't pay income tax on the profit you make from selling trees. You don't pay capital gains tax on the increase in the value of those trees. And most importantly, you've only got to own a forest for two years before you die and you don't pay any inheritance tax on the estate. The principle of selling off forests is nothing new. Margaret Thatcher and John Major attempted it before abandoning their plans, and the protests have been just as passionate this time around. The nightmare scenario for those protesters is this. Rigwood, here in the Lake District, was bought by a private investor last year. The car park has since closed, and this gate has been put up. For the locals who usually enjoy Rigwood and the other 38 public forests in the Lake District, the government plans are a big concern. If the forest was sold off, I'd, I'd just be devastated. There'd be nowhere locally to ride. It'd just be a, a huge loss to the whole of England. The Forestry Commission over the years have been very good at accommodating our bikes, and it's very hard to see a private owner would spend that extra money and go the extra mile to accommodate us. It's a lifeline for so many people who live here and who visit here. And uh, it would be a very sad thing if access was curtailed in any way. The government is spending £120 million a day just servicing the national debt, so we know the sacrifices have to be made. But once a forest is gone, it's gone forever. You don't have to be a tree hugger to be concerned about that. Lucy, so sad. Dermot, you feel quite strongly about this, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I'm not signed up for any campaign or anything, but I mean, if, if they, they should be doing one, because it's, like, like she said at the end, when they go, they don't come back. And I think if you look now, all our natural resources seem to be in the hands of private companies, your water and your gas and so forth, and I think, you know, the forest shouldn't be treated any differently. It's crazy. If you look at the way the forest used to be, over the years, they've just got gradually smaller and smaller, you know, they're talking about Tudor times, when they're yeah. covering the whole of the south of England. Absolutely. Yeah. Not anymore. Um, I just remember sort of going for long walks with my parents when I was a kid, and you know, you, you can't, those memories are so cherished, you know, to me. And, and I think all kids should be able to have access to that kind of wonderful array of wildlife. And Definitely. Nature, so. Should be free, shouldn't it? Right, well, don't panic. Uh, but it's panic week. <laughs>